Welcome to the Alien Nation podcast. This is the place where we talk all things alien and all things UFO. In season one, we're going to be covering all the hot topics. This is going to include George Knapp, Jeremy Corbell, Bob Lazar, the US Nimitz encounter, the Roswell crash, and is there a nuclear UFO agenda, and then also famous UFO landing cases that seem to be around schools. So stay tuned. examples of technology that is seemingly beyond human capability. Right, this this came from somewhere else. I mean, as far as that is to believe, but I mean, it's there. I saw it. I know what the current state of the art is in, in physics, and it's, it can't be done. Hi guys and welcome back to the Alien Nation podcast, the place where we talk all things alien and all things UFO. This is episode three and I'm joined once again by my co-host G. Thanks guys, welcome to the show. Right, so today guys, uh, another very exciting topic and subject to do with UFOs and and the old alien subject. It's one of my personal favourites, one of the reasons why I actually got interested in this subject and that is the the mystery behind the man that is Bob Lazar. Yes, me too, it's definitely going to be a good one. Yeah, so for anybody that's watching this that doesn't really know the Bob Lazar story, I'll, I'll give a quick, quick brief uh, summary of, of his story for you. So back in 1989, investigative journalist George Knapp uh, basically brought Bob Lazar to, to, to the portrait for everybody to be able to see. And uh, George Knapp is a very credible, very reliable, trustworthy journalist. Legend to the game. Absolute legend. He's, he's now known as the UFO guy, but originally... He was looking into all the mobsters and, and all the things that were going on in corruption in Las Vegas. And he's got a lot of credit towards that as well. Now, uh, the original footage that George Knapp captured of Robert Lazar, he's, he's actually covered up. He's blacked out in this this video. We'll, we'll try and show That's it for Dennis. you. Yeah, and he's <laughs> down as Dennis. He tries to hide his identi- identity, really. And the whole reason he says that is because he, he's in fear of his life from the government. He feels that the government are, are going to try and uh, kill him. And he's actually said that there has been attempts on his life in the past. Um, again, to go back for, for the Robert Lazar story, it all started in the, the, the back end of the late 80s, where 1980s, where he actually believes that he worked at a subsector of S4 in Area 51 where he was actually asked by the US government to help reverse engineer or back engineer alien spacecraft. He believes that he got his hands on one, and he actually got to witness seeing uh, another nine, well, nine in total spacecrafts in there. And what, did he call it the sports model? Yeah, the, the, well, basically the different models and different uh, shapes of these crafts, but the one that he actually worked on, he called it the sport model. Yeah, and there was many other ancient crafts even found in that. Yeah, uh, just to, to basically go on what G said, on the Joe Rogan experience, he, he gets asked the question where he believes that the alien spacecraft was from. Now, he said that his lab partner, Barry, who he worked with, 
mentioned to him um, in a previous conversation that he believed that it was actually found in an archaeological dig. Now, that means that it's not just old, it's it's fucking ancient, yeah. um, which again backs up all these stories from uh, the past that says that we've actually interacted with these gods that have come down from the sky and, and helped rebuild civilization. Yeah. Uh, to to keep going on with the Bob Lazar story because there's so much so to cover. much is so deep. It is so so deep. And but so check out cover. Joe Rogan podcast. They definitely break it down pretty good. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's obviously with with it might Bob be even Lazar. better than the movie. Yeah, it, again the movie by Jeremy Corbell, which is uh, Bob Lazar UFOs, uh, Area Fifty One on Flying Saucers. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So definitely go check that out. But um, in in hindsight, with the Bob Lazar story. Even though he came out back out in the late 1980s, so much has come true of what he actually said back then, which is a scary thought, and it does add a lot of credibility to, to what he was saying. Now, some of the things that have come true is that he actually described these hand scanners when he went into Area yeah, 51 and uh, S4, and these hand scanners you, you can probably find on Google. Yeah, but I think Jeremy certainly. Corbell got him a picture of one. Yeah, Jeremy Corbell, he's he's the guy that obviously made the, the uh, movie on Bob Lazar, which we, we've plugged earlier on. And if you check that out, you'll see the hand scanners on there. Now, what he said is that these hand scanners, when he went into S4, he put his, his hand on them. It measured the density of the bones in, in the hand itself and that these bones uh, are very unique to you. And at the bottom, it pop out his, his card to be able to, to grant him access to S4. Now, back then in the 1980s, when he was coming out saying all this, these didn't exist. People didn't know of their existence. And they basically laughed at them. Yeah. It's now being come out or, or that it's all true with the hand scanners, that these hand scanners do exist and that certain governments have used them. Uh, he's also came up with so much other stuff to do with the alien spacecraft. He believes that it was fueled by an element called 115. Yeah. Now, what's controversial about this is, again, this is a story that was over 30 years ago. He came out saying that this element 115 uh, help maneuver the spacecraft and, and basically help create gravity waves that help propul uh, help the propulsion system with this aircraft. Element 115 doesn't exist, or at least it didn't exist until roughly, as far as I'm aware, around about 2003, yeah. where uh, some scientists got together and for a brief moment they actually managed to, to create Element 115. Again, this just gives Bob Lazar's story a little bit more credibility. Yeah, I think if in the movie he can see that maybe he might have stole some of this element one fifteen because his house gets raided. Yeah, well, again, Bob Lazar, he's a he's a very he's a bit of a wild child back in the day. Colorful guy, a very yeah. colorful guy back in the day. Um, you know, we'd have a particle particle accelerator in his front main bedroom. Um, he tried to use that as like a, a weapon <laughs> in case somebody tried to come into his home. It, well, it's it's obvious that he's a crazy he, scientist. <laughs> he is a crazy scientist. It's obvious that he definitely uh, got some element one fifteen because he hints at it so many times in the movie yeah. with Jeremy Corbell. Um, there's, there's actually a two minute video clip that George Knapp unfortunately seems to have lost that shows uh, the this element one fifteen at work in and what he calls a cloud chamber. Oh, wicked! I haven't seen that. Uh, to, to to keep going with the Bob Lazar story because there's just some so much craziness behind it. Um, he actually took some of his friends out and got video footage of this right. aircraft um, doing some manoeuvres and you see like a bright light going across the, the, the lake in the Nevada desert and the whole reason why Bob took his friends out there to show them this is because they too thought that he was crazy and that he was actually uh, maybe lying about what he was saying and the fact that he wanted insurance policy on his own life because he felt that his life was, was a threat at the moment. Yes, uh, incredible stuff like this movie uh, was the one that really brought it to light for everyone. I think it was one of the first UFO movies that, you know, that had a credible person come forward from these, yeah. t that was able to talk about the craft, that was able to detail information on them. Yeah, yeah most definitely. The, the whole reason why Bob thinks that he was in fear for his life is basically... It was uh, some crazy shifts that were going on. He got told to, to come in at certain times. You get a phone call at like 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. You have to be at this airport at this time. And uh, he wasn't actually even told to tell his wife what his job was. And uh, his wife basically thought he was having an affair. So she began an affair with another man. 
which is obviously uncomfortable for Bob to talk about. Yeah. And um, while he was going off to work, she was actually having an affair with a flight instructor, and all this was uh, recorded by the government because they tapped his phones. They seen that through these phone calls, he was having a little bit of a, an unhealthy uh, home life, and they felt that he maybe needed a break, so they told him to take a, a couple of weeks break. Bob thought that maybe they were trying to bump him off, that they were trying to, he was trying to get, isolate him out of the, the whole project. And that's why he took his friends out there to the lake to show them this uh, UFO that is reportedly going out there every Wednesday night and doing manoeuvres that the, the, the US uh, government were actually uh, you know, driving this, this thing. Um, the, the whole thing got out of control and crazy when he got caught taking them out there. They brought him in and they basically showed him the, the, the tapes of his wife on the phone to this flight instructor having an affair. Deep, <laughs> yeah, real deep. Um, going back again, there's just so much to do with with Bob Lazar. There's a lot of discreditors out there, a lot of people out there that call uh, Bob a liar. But he's never changed his story from the eighties. No, from the eighties, he's he's never changed the story. His story's been so reliable. It's been so detailed. And he he didn't get into this for fame. He doesn't want. He doesn't even want about be about this life really no if you if you speak to bob himself and you, know, you see him in these interviews you can tell that this whole story has definitely given his life a, a negative side something that yeah. he's actually said himself now that he wishes he probably never came out and said what he said but he did do it all for, for the life insurance policy and um, the, the whole discrediting thing that comes with bob is the fact that there's been some sort of attempt to delete his history yeah that's correct and the uh, phone book and he was in the phone book and they're saying he's not in the phone book yeah so the, the whole part of it is that they tried to say that he's not actually a scientist he's not a physicist that bob's just a liar um that he never worked at los alamos lab which is where he claimed that he, he basically got some of his qualifications from um and when he looked into it they were denying it themselves they were saying that he didn't work there and things like that but George Knapp, as I say, he's a, he's a very intelligent uh, investigative reporter. When he looked into it and he detailed it, he actually found in a phone book that she talks about Robert Lazar's name, um, yeah. which proves that he, he was in the, the original phone book for Los Alamos. He also was on the front of Los Alamos' uh, newspaper article, and it's a picture of him with his Honda Sports car with a, a jet engine on that's the back. Quick, yeah. I think maybe that's why he got the call, the Area 51. That's that. That's what Bob kind of says is that you know the work that he done on, on the propulsion systems and the fact that he was a bit of a crazy uh, wacky scientist, is the whole reason that they they needed somebody to think outside the box to bring him down to look at these spacecraft because these spacecraft that they were looking at were obviously uh, so far advanced in technology that they needed somebody that could maybe think a little bit differently to to the way they were. Yeah, and he and he has a drawing and he, he he draws the craft like into such great detail and he can explain it. And the size of it in massive detail, like which yeah. no one was really able to do before this. Yeah. So if if you do believe Bob's story, like I do, and and I think G does, yeah, hundred percent. Um, you can actually catch Bob Lazard drawing what he calls the sport model UFO that he, he encountered and, and got to work on, and he says that it's got three different levels, and on one level. Um, he actually got to work on, which was to, to do with the propulsion system. Yeah, and like that. they didn't get to work on every level. It was you're brought in for a certain type of uh, part of the project, and you just got allocated that. And it very seems like there's not a lot of communication in these areas. You were just brought in to work on this specific thing. Yeah, that that's right. Uh, Bob talks about this in in great detail, and he he, he calls it basically a crime against uh, science that the government are withholding this info or with, withholding this information uh, from the public, and uh, that the whole program itself was so compartmentalized that they couldn't actually speak to the other scientists. They were called uh, a buddy buddy system, where Bob was buddy was was his uh, science a lab partner called Barry and that was the only person that he could actually exchange information on and they were only allowed to work on the propulsion system so we'd have other guys working on the weapon system some looking on metallurgy some looking at uh, the navigational system but they were never actually uh, able to, to cross over and work with each other at all yes which is madness like how are you ever going to figure out this stuff if you don't communicate <laughs> it, exactly that you know it slows the process down so much that um, you know, it's going to take many, many years before you could you could actually do what they wanted to do or accomplish. 
So anyway, guys, um, to wrap all this up, Bob Lazar, I personally believe his whole story. Go watch the movie. Go check out the podcast. I think G agrees with me. Yeah. Bob Lazar is telling the truth. Make sure you watch it, guys. Uh, for all the disbelievers and discreditors, keep on disbelieving. Keep on talking about it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's great to have these debates with you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.